Hello, and welcome to the Knit Girls. This is episode 501. I'm Laura, also known as Lala. I'm Leslie, also known as Knit Girl Les. <laughs> I didn't get it wrong. I just took a minute. I mean, um, I take a minute a lot. <laughs> today is Friday, September the 18th. Um, no witty quote. <laughs> nothing, nothing to add to that. Nothing. The yes. Halloween craft, all the things started on the 15th. Oh, it did, didn't it? Yep. So there's, uh, if you are a user of Ravelry, there are threads on Ravelry, but also there's a hashtag TKG Halloween C A T T that you can use on Instagram and we'll be drawing prizes from both places. We had talked about last week drawing a prize on the website, but then I forgot what it was. You forgot what what was? What the prize was. Like, I just remember that conversation. Oh, I don't think we had decided on a prize. We were trying to figure out a method. Okay. And then we never discussed it again. (laughs) (laughs) I was going to say, and then Leslie and I didn't speak for a week, so. That's about right. COVID is not doing wonders for our friendship unfortunately welcome to our pandemic yeah. it is doing wonders for my work hours <laughs> uh, anyway um if only i got paid by the hour <laughs> i kissed that goodbye when i was 19 yeah when was the last time we were hourly last time i was hourly um think I was 23 well I've worked hourly positions like tutoring right like on the side yeah on the side but last time I was full-time hourly I was working in a nerd like a plant nursery and Mm -hmm. also selling Christmas trees I'm pretty sure that's the last time I was like hourly paycheck I don't know it's been a time so that's been 17 years. I can't even remember what I did 10 minutes ago. <laughs> or why I'm in this room. Why am I in this room? Where did I put my soda? For my water? <laughs> that was a big one today at work. I was like, I cannot find my water. Where did I put it? And I'm the only, like, I'm so used to having library helpers mm-hmm. that are like, Miss Littleman, it's on that shelf over there. Yeah. I don't have them this year because I'm the only person that can touch books. Mm -hmm. Um, to pull them so things go like it's it's a hunt I need one of those tile things for my water (laughs) if I had a water bottle I would but I don't have a place to refill water bottles at work really so anyway woe is me a tale of woe and lack of water in my life (laughs) I mean, Mississippi's water is actually pretty good because we're on, on top of an aquifer, but. I did not know that, but it is good. I just am not willing to use a public water fountain this year to get water. Fair enough. The water can be as hygienic as it wants, but if somebody puts their mouth on top of the uh, spout. <laughs> That's a Parks and Rec thing, by the way, which if you like Parks and Rec, you would totally get that. But Someone asked cool. me the other day if I like, oh, uh, one of my coworkers asked me the other day if I like Parks and Rec because I was listing my love of post-it notes and how I've gone through, I've gone through a pack that looks like this of post-it notes already this year. Because <laughs> <laughs> I put them on um, when I pull a book for a kid. I put them on there, and I've gone through um, 2,000 post-it notes this, already this school year. And You're very Leslie noping it. Yeah, and so that's what one of my coworkers said. And then today she brought me a stack of post-it notes. Oh, that's I left nice. them. Like, I hope you enjoy these post-it notes. Love Miss Leg. It was super sweet. Aww. She's uh, one of my young teachers, and she, during the quarantine, in order to motivate her students to do um, their work, if they did their work for the day, she would do a TikTok dance for them. Oh. <laughs> that was super cute. That is um, cool. But yeah, she and another teacher 
are amazing. Well, there's lots of amazing teachers at my school. But, like, that was, the two of them did TikToks, and they're both, like... I disagree. You're the year. only amazing teacher at your school. Mm. That is false. So false. But, anyway, um, what are you knitting on, friend, or would you like me to go first? I would like for you to go first, please. Okay. I'm going to go in reverse order of what's on the show notes, and our show notes can be found at theknitgirls3ls.com. It's where we link everything sometimes and uh, put other things. If it's anywhere, it's there. Yeah, usually. So I just started the Empower People bandana, the knit pattern. There's a sewn pattern, a crochet pattern, and a knit pattern. The mm-hmm. knit pattern is by Casa Pinka, and I've linked the website in the show notes. So if you are not a Ravelry user, the website is linked. Um, this is... Uh, a bandana that's meant to be worn when you're doing things like speaking against injustice, attending gatherings, marching, or voting. Um, So I plan on wearing this when I vote this fall. So I'm trying to get it done ahead of time, although I might wear it other times. I got a neighborhood fiber company, had this super cute t-shirt that said vote, and it had balls of yarn on it. So, and it's gray with purple, so it will go perfect with that. I'm super excited. That's going to be my voting outfit this year. So I decided to start this, and I thought I had no purple DK in my stash. (laughs) I was like, I might need to buy some. I can't find any. And I had forgotten at, um, I think it was House of Yarn last year, I picked up some old rusted chair. So Lou dyes gorgeous purples. I wish I could tell you what the name of this was, but I cleaned five minutes ago and now I've lost all my tags, but I found a different tag that I'll talk about in a second. But Lou does some gorgeous stuff and she is a wonderful human being and House of Yarn is what we consider our local yarn shop, even though it's in Nashville. Although um, Heart and Spirit in Atlanta is number two for local yarn shops for me because they are amazing as well. Um, so yeah, I'm starting this and it's super easy. I did put a marker on the side that I'm doing the increases on and I hope some other people do it as well. So that is the first thing I'm knitting on. I'm knitting these on size six needles and I have no idea what kind of needles they were. They were, uh, to be put away in my bin. There's some old (laughs) ones from, I think I bought these back in like 2002. So they're just 16 inch. They work fine. So we are rocking that and they needed to be put away. And now they're in a project again, which is the best way to put away needles. I have a whole stack of needles over here to put away. The second thing that I've been working on are some Tolkien socks, but I don't know where I put the bag. Oh, there they are. I'm sorry, Pearl. I scooched back a little bit and Pearl's sitting behind me pearls my um dog so she got very upset with me so i've gotten these to the heel increases these are um this is a sport weight sock yarn it is targi from knit spin farm and they do a little known holidays club joanna and bill do and so i um have been a member right now though right it is I'm not stealing your yarn from you. I mean, I'll <laughs> have to ask. <laughs> it's on hold, I think, until October or November. They also offer cranking services, which are resumed again. Um, Bill had to build Joanna like a new warping mill because she had done something to her shoulder or rotator cuff. Uh, so that's why they're on break. And they're a working farm, so they right. take a break usually so during the break. summer. Yeah. Um, they make bread, and if you are in Indiana, we're in Indiana. Mm-hmm. Where are they? Indianapolis area? Yeah, they're like an hour outside of Indianapolis, I think. Um, they would be a great, like, their bread and pasta looks amazing on Instagram. I want to try some. Anyway, uh, they go to a local farmer's market on, like, Tuesday nights to sell their wares. And they bike there, and they take everything on like things that they pull with their bikes, trailers. Yeah, they're human. A human I would like to be when I grow up. They're good people. They are very good people. 
So I am knitting on these socks. I'm using Wendy Johnson's toe up method with um, a gusset heel, which you can find on wendyknits.net. She actually has all the numbers under her free patterns. So you can cast on a bunch of dip. Like this is a 52 inch around or 52 stitch around sock. So um, she's got tons of numbers that you can work you know, whatever size fits you best and just plug in those numbers for the heels and go to town. So I have done some heel increases. I have a bit more to go. And then this will be past the heel turn or I'll have started the heel turn. So I'm knitting that on a size one Addy squared. Um, the Addy sock rocket squared. I like the texture of them. And they seem to hold my stitches really well. And I'm magic looping that. And then the last thing is also a sock and is also being magic looped. But it is past the heel. I worked on this during um, knit night this week. And then Daedalus does a spin-in on Wednesday nights. That's open. It's You can find the information on their Facebook group. It's a great group of people. I enjoy it immensely. It starts at 6 p.m. Eastern. Um, so I get home and typically mute my camera and my mic and eat <laughs> as I watch people on there. And then because I get home around 445 usually and um, then join in when I'm done showing down or vice or I might wait and then join. Anyway, um, it's a good group of people and some people knit and a lot of people spin and some people weave. There's a lot of weaving going on. I think you would like it for that. I know you don't do Zooms. Because you're on Zoom all day. Yeah. It's not that I don't do Zooms. I do too many Zooms. So, but there's, um, weaving is really strong in that group right now. Mm, and there's cool. been some really cool weaving, woven pieces that are, like, to the point where I'm like, I should weave. It's like that you one time weave. a year. That one, that 30 seconds a year that I'm like, I should weave. And then I'm like, mm -hmm. no, maybe later. <laughs> So anyway, I sat and worked on my socks on a plain sock this week, and I got past the heel turn. And I have around 12 more cable repeats, so 12 times 6, that number of rows, 72. And then I'll be done with it. So this is socks on a plain. Ooh, but when I was cleaning earlier, I found the tag for this, this yarn that I was like, oh. I have no idea what this yarn is, except that it's long dog yarns. So it is Long Dog Yarns, and it's in the Jawbreaker colorway. Mm, that sounds right. Yeah. So we never knew what colorway this was because I had lost the tag the second I wound it. That's a common theme in my life. And um, so, yeah, I found the tag for this one and promptly lost the tag for another one. I'll find it. This was the first one. So I'm on the second one. So I'm hoping these will be done this week. I think it's doable for sure. And that is all that I have on the needles. Did I give you enough time to do your thing? Whatever um, thing you were doing? <laughs> yes. Uh-oh. Somebody's existing and they did not get Pearl's approval first. People are mowing their lawns, and yeah. she is not a fan of the other people taking care of their properties. I am, <laughs> but she is not, because she is bossed off. Did I tell you she found the garage window? Yes, you talked about that last week. Okay. I'm, like, getting um, to the point in my life where I tell the same stories over and over again, and I'm totally on board with it. I yeah. don't know that I ever was not in that point in my life, but I'm <laughs> but now you you realize it. <laughs> now you're self aware. <laughs> um. So last week during the podcast, I cast on for Urso by yeah. Jacqueline Sizzlax Sizzlax. Um, and I'm knitting this. Uh, it calls for a bulky. Um, I believe it's a bulky. I'm knitting this out of um, cotton because a bulky wool is just not something that's ever going to happen for me. 
uh, I just run too hot for that. So I'm using Nitpicks Billow. I've had this in the stash forever. And um, forever. it's cotton. And I finished the body. Look at you. So is there a neckline that gets picked up or no? No, you pick up and bind off immediately so that you clean up the edges a little bit. Yeah. Which I did, but I still don't love the way that it looks. So I'm going to go in, like it still rolls a little bit. Yeah. So I'm going to go in and do a grow grain underneath it to sort Ooh. of stay closet. Yeah, the that's nice because that'll keep it from growing too a little bit. Yeah, yeah, it'll reinforce. While you um, carry the grow grain over to the, like the shoulder, like run it right here, like as a shoulder seam to keep it from stretching? I don't know. We'll see how well the neckline goes. Okay. And then go from there. Um, I didn't do the short rows the way that it said in the pattern. Not because I'm a rebel, but because I just forgot to read that part. So um, I didn't so, do the German the short rows. Okay. Yeah, yeah it has um, bust built in for like C, D cups and then E, F cups. Um, actually, it might have more than that. Let me see. It's a very size inclusive sweater. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, oh, and it does GH bust as well. So yeah, there are darts built into it. Um, the pattern goes from uh, 34 inches to 66 inches. And this, uh, that does not account for six inches of, between two and six inches of ease. Um, How much I, ease did you build in? Uh, one inch because I don't want this to be a super loose sweater because it's cotton. Yeah, and it'll grow. And cotton tends to grow anyway. So, um, yeah, so I just picked up for the sleeve. This I knit this on size 11 needles, which is uh, 8 millimeter. Um, I'm using uh, Licka. This is a set I actually got from House of Yarn. The, the Licka... Um, yeah, I need to find what? that set. It's disappeared on me, meaning it's disappeared somewhere into this house. Yeah. Mom straightened up my needles when she visited like two mm. times ago. Yeah, and, that's right. Um, I don't know. Oh, I see it. It's right over there. Never mind. I know where it is. <laughs> I was like, where did she straighten them up to? And then I saw all the sets of needles and that's where they would be straightened to. My mom organizing and stuff. It's amazing. Um, well, I have tried it on. It fits fine. Yay! Um, I do need to, you know, wash it because the stitches are kind of wonky and uneven. But um, I knit it a little bit shorter than it called for. It has it, the way that you, like, determine length is about how many of the stockinette stitches that you turn into brioche stitches on each round. And you're only supposed to grow it, uh, like, two stitches, like, one stitch on either side of the markers. But when I got to a certain length, I was like, I don't want it to, I have a very short torso. Like my torso was very short. I'm five three, but between my torso and my legs, my legs are like 60% of my height or more. Like my, my torso is very short. So for me, if it's gonna be a cropped sweater, it has to be really cropped or else it's just gonna look like I knit it too short. Like yeah. it's gonna look at an odd length so I increased the rate of how many um, stitches I added into brioche I think I went um, I did two on either side you can email me if you have any questions about it at leslie at the knit um, but I just added instead of doing one on either side of the marker I did two um, on either side of the marker for the last like 10 rounds so I increased it substantially um, because my torso is so short. So um, it also calls for long sleeves. That is not going to happen. Um, I probably am going to do three quarter sleeves. I'll do stockinette to the elbow and then I'll do a little bit of brioche or ribbing at the edge. Um, it doesn't have that in the pattern. It just has it in stockinette, but I don't want it to roll. So um, rolling sweaters annoy me 
when I wear them. I don't care, you know, if somebody else wears it, I don't care. It doesn't bother me. But if I'm wearing it, I, I don't want it to roll. So, yeah, this is basically the only thing that I have worked on knitting-wise. That's whole awesome, though. But, yeah, I'm happy with it. I like the color. Um, I do need to get some ribbon to go under here, but aside from that, yeah, I'm making good progress. I'm happy. Yay! So, I'm happy that you're happy. Um, I did a little bit of sewing as well. Oh, your overalls. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're unsurprisingly a huge pain in the ass to put together. Um, <laughs> I uh, this probably you plan on doing them multiple times. <laughs> they uh, that probably surprises no one who's ever made clothes before. But um, yeah, it was kind of a pain in the butt. So I've only got the body part done, the the bib part. Um, like where the pocket goes and the straps I haven't got that part done yet at this point I had been working on this for like four hours and I was like I'm done I gotta step away from this so um let me show you the front I gotta figure out which sides this is the back this is the front so yeah this is in all of its amazing glory of course I've still got unfinished seams and stuff because it's not done yet but I've got like these huge pockets on the sides nice um, I made no effort whatsoever to match the pattern. Like, <laughs> I think that makes it even better. I just don't care. Um, I hope that you get to wear these at like SSK next year. Yeah, let me see if I can put it on here. Let's see. Over my clothes here. Oh, that's my boobs. Sorry. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, so this is the front part of the bib. I guess you can't see that. This is the front part of the bib. Yeah. Will it have um, another, like, bib pocket? There's pockets here. Yeah, it will have another bib pocket. This is the back part. I haven't seamed that together yet. Will so. you have snaps on the side, like regular overalls? <sighs> yes, it has. Um, it's actually got snaps and belts. So get out of it and I'll show you. So <laughs> it's got um, snaps aren't on there yet, but it's got little belts too where it'll have two D rings. Ah um, you know that'll go between and you you uh, you can tighten it there as well so you can cinch it in at the at the waist quite a bit. So yeah there's still quite a bit to do but I mean, the pieces are coming together sort of in a way that they're supposed to. So I'm happy with that. Yeah. And that seems to fit. Yeah. So that's a bonus. I can't wait to see you wearing them. I hope you wear your Ursa with them. Yeah. It's going to be hideous and I cannot wait. I'm super excited um, about it. Ooh, I'm going to show you guys, show you Jesse's as well. Um. Jessie is Little Hip Kitty, and she's somebody I've been sort of unofficially sewing along with. Uh, let's see. Can't remember if I've got it. Oh, there it is. Okay. So these are hers, and they are also hideous. I think they're amazing. I, I like how she did the striped pockets. Yeah. So she's got ticking for the pockets and the straps, um, I think. And then this, like, you know, super, like, I don't know what those flowers are. It's a good floral. They look like roses, maybe. Um, yeah, they might be. I don't know. But, yeah, I'm so in support of hideous overalls. It's going to be amazing. Michael think, does not understand why I'm so excited about them, but <laughs> I think in support of Hideous overall should be the title of the episode. That can happen. I can make that happen. I bet you can. So that's all my crafting for the week. Cool. I have a what little bit of finished? spinning. I haven't finished anything, friend. Okay. That's okay. Um, I have spinning. Yeah, I have spinning. That's okay. Even if I had nothing, it would be okay. That would be okay, too. 
All right, so we're having some technical issues, and hopefully they are fixed. Leslie hung up and called back in. But we apologize if they're if things are a little out of sorts this week. Um, even though I, I spend lots of money with Comcast on their highest bandwidth of uh, internet sometimes at this time of day mm-hmm. when other people are around, it is not so hot. So we're going to start over with my spinning. So I am spinning some Nest Fiber Studio, and I'm doing it as a spin-along with my friend Jess and Lynn. Um, Nest Fiber Studio has a Ravelry group, and once a month you spin, like, you commit to three months, and you spin four ounces a month and put in FO projects, like, every month, and then there's a drawing for a prize at the end. So um, I'm doing this. This is Rise and Shine on her Falkland base. And this is the first four ounces. I divided my fiber vertically and I'm spinning the first four ounces. I spun the first four ounces end to end. And then the second four ounces I divided into thirds again vertically. And it's going to be a fractal when it's a fractal two ply when it's done. Probably around a sport weight, I would think. Um, Oh, I had finished spinning to show i'll show it next week because i have that skein of hello yarn like that eight ounces to show y'all oh wow but uh it's in my laundry pile (laughs) (laughs) it's not easily accessible and that is in the kitchen so it's uh not here (laughs) i'll get it for next week i totally had forgotten that i finished that like Within the last, I guess, last weekend. See, I did do things. I did craft a little bit this week. I was feeling a little bit like, mm, I didn't do a whole lot. But really, I did. Totally. Um, we're going with that. So that is my spinning. What have you been reading, friend? Oh, it hasn't taken nearly as long as I thought it would. Um... I am still rereading the Kate Daniels series. I'm on, I think, number eight. It's the one where they separated from the pack. Oh, so you got through the, my least favorite book. Yeah, that I the one on the Europe one with the the one in the Carpathian Mountains. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna <sighs> skip rereading that one and move on. But I have yeah. other things. I still haven't listened to the new Alana Andrews, so I've I got that to listen to. Um. But yeah, so I'm listening, or I'm reading, mostly reading. I do alternate between reading and listening, because I own all of them in both forms. Yeah, so, so it sinks. Um, yeah, so it sinks between them. Um, I've been continuing to listen to Best Friends with um, Nicole Byer and Sashir Zamata. I just finished the one with um, Bob the Drag Queen and Monet Exchange. Oh, I bet that's a good one. Yeah, that was really funny. And apparently they have a podcast, Sibling yeah. Rivalry. Yeah, do you um, not watch it? No. Oh, it's um, good. I just tried to listen to it. I didn't realize there was a video version. Yeah, but, there's a video version on YouTube. Uh, I'll have to look that up because I tried to listen to the first one and Monet is eating while they're recording. <laughs> yeah. That's... I had to tap out. I'm like, I can't do this. I would start with their last ones. pretty funny. They go off topic a lot, which is... I mean, I don't mind that. Yeah. I mean, if you don't, if you mind that, I don't know why you're watching us right now. Yeah, that's probably true. Um, Girl, I, what? Are you, my dog is licking the sock machine. What are you doing? Oh, so weird. Anyway, continue. Dang delicious, apparently. This that machine oil is so tasty. Um, so I've been listening to that as well as Why Won't You Date Me with Nicole Byer. That one's pretty funny. And, um, I haven't listened to any My Dad Wrote Porno this week. I really wish I knew when they were coming back, the My Dad Wrote a Porno crew. It's not on, like, their website? No. no, Sarah and I have both looked. It is nowhere. Um, and they like intentionally they didn't announce when they were going to do 2020 because they were going to be on tour for most of the year but you know that hasn't happened so i uh, wonder i don't know do they have personal instagrams 
Then they do, but the they don't post anything. I've done the cyber stalking. Okay. I mean, they post things, but nothing about. Um, but are know, they posting stuff. like you know? They're one of them's in like Asia right now. That would keep them from recording or something. Mm-hmm. I don't think so. But if anybody has any like, you know, super secret info, I would love to know. <laughs> um. But yeah, that's that's about it. What about you? What have you been reading? I finished uh, Things You Can't Say by Jen Bishop, was which is the middle grade novel that I discussed last week. It was good. Um, I was really happy that it wasn't like a neat, tidy ending, that there was mm-hmm. still growth and room for growth that was going to happen with the characters at the end. Um, and I don't want to talk about it too much because I feel like I am going to give away the end if I do. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was, it was good. I really liked it. Uh, it's a difficult topic, um, dealing with a parent that's completed suicide. So, um, yeah, it was, I'm, I'm glad to see that there's books about that topic out there Yeah, for sure. And, um, I put the copy that I was reading, I put it in my library system and it was immediately checked out like within moments. So that's good. Yeah, I put 120 new books in today. Um, I had placed an order with Scholastic using the last of our book fair money from last year. So all the Diary of Wimpy Kid came in. Two sets of Diary of Wimpy Kids, like almost $400. Yeah. It made me cringe a little bit. I mean, they're going <laughs> to read it and they're going to love it. And yeah. it's, you know, it's not a big deal kids reading yeah oh yeah absolutely i just wish that i wasn't buying the same books over and over and over again (laughs) because they wear out the copies or they get lost or yeah they stay at a house and never get returned um so yeah anyway and i'm a no fine i don't charge library fines so anyway um like late fines or anything. Uh, So I finished that and it was really good. I did not have a whole lot of time for reading after that. I finished that, I think on Tuesday. So after that, it was pretty busy and hectic. Um, I watched and very exciting me. I watched a bunch of webinars on Schoology this week Mm -hmm. and I watched a bunch of webinars on the Scholastic Book Fair that we're doing, which will be virtual. So lots of exciting things. (laughs) And uh, tonight I started, I um, am watching the Tour de France and I'm so glad that I paid the money to be able to, I got a cycling pass for the year, um, which is an NBC gold thing. And I'm able to watch it when I have time because Mm -hmm. I'm still on stage 10. Don't wreck it for me y'all. And it's almost over. So, um, they're like on stage 20 today, I think, or 19. So, um, I'm way far behind, but I'm enjoying watching like, you know, every stage is like five hours and I might have an hour every couple days to watch. Mm -hmm. So I'm enjoying it at my own pace. And I'm super happy that that, because normally I would be like, oh, you're falling behind. Oh, you're missing out. Yeah. But, um, I w- I'm really glad that for my mental well-being that I spent the money to do that um, for sure. So, and eventually I'm going to start watching Halloween movies because that is my favorite thing. So I'll watch some Practical Magic and some Hocus Pocus and some Halloween Town and other kid-centric Halloween movies that I enjoy <laughs> a lot. Practical Magic isn't kid-centric, but it's a good one. That's the so, Sandra Bullock one, right? Yes, Nicole Kidman Sandra Bullock, where they kill her abusive, they kill Nicole Kidman's abusive boyfriend. Um, and he comes back to haunt them. So. Yeah, that's a good one. Um... The Halloween Craft All the Things started on the 15th. It will go to a November 1st. I'm going to switch that because I feel like that gives people some time to get stuff in. So we're going to run it to 11-1. Um, 
so people have time to get stuff in and you can use the hashtag tkg halloween c-a-t-t on instagram and we'll draw winners from both instagram and ravelry and maybe on the website too maybe we'll do a raffle copter or something if you're interested in donating prizes to the halloween craft all the things just let me know you can send me a pm i'm lala on inst i'm lala knits on instagram i'm lala on ravelry or you can send me an email at laura at the knitgirls.com with three l's is there any favorite things that you've been experiencing this week um well, not really i've been um kobe and i there's a new game out i'll finish one of these sentences um <laughs> the on the nintendo switch the nintendo re-released for its 25th mario anniversary i oh, guess cool. um 35th not 25th they re-released three games so um mario 64 oh mario sunshine i've never even heard of that one it's where he like sprays water to get rid of paint uh, there's like an evil Mario. It wasn't my favorite. And then Mario Galaxy. So they re-released all three of those. They improved graphics and stuff um, on the Switch. So, um, and it just came out today. Oh. So Kobe played some Mario Sunshine earlier while I was working. And um, that's not my thing, but he enjoys it. So uh, I'll try to probably play 64 later. Um, and then we'll play Galaxy together because Galaxy, you can play it as two players. On uh, Animal Crossing, you can shake trees and pine cones and acorns fall. And then you can make things with them. That's exciting. <laughs> it's a lot of tree shaking that's going on <laughs> in my life. And I bought some bootleg art today. You did? <laughs> I mean, it was real art. Because it was one of the ones that doesn't have a fake. Oh, yeah. Okay. I did that, and I bought one, and it wasn't a fake. But I already had it in my museum. I have three pieces of art in my museum, and I already had that one. <laughs> so oh, that's I, crappy that you can buy the same one again. Yeah, so then I gave it to a villager. I think. Or I sold it in the store. I can't remember what I did. I'm running out of room in my house storage. So mm -hmm. I have to start getting rid of some stuff. You're going to have to, like, allow the option of buying a shed or something. <laughs> <laughs> she shed up back. <laughs> Come on, Animal Crossing. Oop, I was not supposed to do that. Um, yeah, I screwed up my picking up for the sleeve, so I just put it away. I'll deal with it later. Yeah. So, that is a good thing to do later. Um, I, I don't think I have anything else. Do you? I don't think so. We'll do a, uh, we haven't done like a stash dash recap. Someone asked about it. Yeah, I started going through the Ravelry threads. So okay. if you want to do like um, social media and I'll do Ravelry and then we can, you know, record a little thing of us going through it. Um, yeah. You can do Ravelry too. But... Well, I'm just worried about with Ravelry people like the screen, like an accessibility thing. I don't know. We'll figure it out. We'll discuss it yeah, and we'll talk, talk to some it. folks and figure out what's the best way to do it. Because maybe we can like take like uh, screenshots of people's pictures, like making them large, yeah, and without like the background. And maybe that maybe. would be the best way to do it. I don't know. Yeah. Um, we'll figure out what's the best, most accept accessible way of doing it. And talk to some folks and see what they think. Because, yeah. and if you have an idea, please let us know. Or suggestion. Yeah. yeah. Or, you know, we're, we will never learn if we don't ask. So, yeah, absolutely. All right. Yeah. You guys have um, a lovely weekend. We'll talk to you again next week. Bye, y'all.